All right, guys, it is Sunday, June 21st, 2020. Sunday, uh, it's probably right afternoon a little bit. So if you want to know how to take one step forward and then about 25 steps backwards, that's how you do it. But if you've been following the build, the body had already been on there and bolted down. Now it's out here on the body cart again. I mentioned this at try5.com in my build thread the other day. I have solvent pop in the forward section of the car now because I found it in the roof and on the rear section of the car back here. So I spent all kinds of time uh, going through and sanding it all out and then re 2K priming it and uh, getting it ready. Uh, anyway, I just happened to have the car pushed out in the sun the other day and I found solvent pop in the forward section now. So uh, I now have to redo all that. So pretty much the whole car needs a whole paint job, firewall and all, and there is no way I'm going to paint the firewall with the engine in it, chassis on it, and all that. So apart it came. Thank goodness I didn't have anything else bolted on it, because that would have sucked. Uh, but anyway, so I've been sanding on it for a couple of days now, and I've got one whole side finished. And I've started working my way around the cowl. Uh, there's areas of the car that it's not as bad. Uh, the door hinge area is the worst. Uh, I left the door hinges bolted to the cowl uh, because during mock-up, when I first started doing the metal work on the car, I had the, you know, the door set up on it and everything. And then I took it all apart and I blasted the door hinges and all that and rebuilt them, did a bunch of work and put it all back together. Nothing ever lines up as good as it's in mock-up, you know. Uh, so this time I decided to leave the hinges on the car and paint them on it, and then I'd just rehang the doors after they were painted. So the, the solvent pop is the worst around the door hinge area because when you paint a door hinge, there's four sides of it. So by the time you get all the coats on that one door hinge, you've got all that excess that has blown on the door hinge face plates and around the cowl area. Right there. Train. He'll blow it again. Probably again. <laughs> there we go. Anyway, <laughs> so the, oh, we've got a fourth one out. Anyway, the solvent pop is the worst around the door hinge area. Uh, the door hinges themselves not so bad, but the, that area where all that clear built up, it's white. And I would, I did not see that in this dark garage. Even with all these lights in here, you can't see it in that black paint, which was pretty odd. Uh, but if that sun's directly on it, it looks like a disco ball. It's that prominent. Uh, so anyway, took the body off frame and here we go again. So it really sucks. I had the car buffed. Uh, all I had to do was redo the rear paint and buff it again and it was ready to rock. You know, I start putting it together. But it's never that easy for me, it seems like. So anyway, uh, I have done a lot of research on solid pop, a lot in the last few weeks since I found it in the in the back half of the car. Uh, I have been on Google, I have watched videos, and I have talked to a ton of painters, and uh, I learned a lot about solid pop. And it's not just one thing that can cause it. There are lots of things that can cause it. I learned a valuable lesson in that if you get solvent pop. Don't ask Joe Blow down the street that uh, paints cars in his garage because you're going to get steered in the wrong direction. I have heard some pretty stupid shit from guys that, I'll say this, a couple of them, I doubt they've ever painted a car. So, huh, <laughs> true story. Uh, I hate to be that way, they're just trying to help. But if you, you, know, you don't have experience in something, you should not be giving advice to somebody. Anyway, the, the person you need, if you get solvent and pop, person you need to talk to is your brand, your company, the, the, the brand of clear you used. And that's the case I did. Uh, whether it be through email, phone call, whatever, that's who you need to talk to. So uh, what a couple of guys told me, uh, I asked other painters about, I asked uh, two paint reps, I talked to two paint reps. One of the paint reps in particular I was talking to in person, he got a cell phone out and called somebody he knows and was on the phone with him for about 10 minutes about it. And 
and the manufacturer, when I told them uh, what one guy told me I, I needed to do, it's the coulda, woulda, shoulda shit you hear in a lot of these amateurs. Uh, their answer, their reply was not recommended. Uh, one of the paint reps laughed. Uh, the other paint rep, his exact words were, yeah, I wouldn't do that. So anyway, be careful uh, who you get your advice from. So. Anyway, in my case, it is solely my fault because I did a bunch of stupid shit uh, to get solvent pop on this. Now, with that being said, I have never gotten solvent pop before, ever. Uh, I painted my first car at 17. I am 48 now. Uh, I opened my own shop in the 90s. I only had it open for about four years. It's in a really small town that maybe had 500 population. Uh, and had I have not done mechanic work and detailing, uh, I probably wouldn't even have made it four years. So without selling myself short or going over exaggerative, uh, I'm going to say it's in the neighborhood of 50 to 75 cars I've painted. And I'm talking full paint jobs, not just painting stripes on it or some stupid shit like that. I'm talking full paint jobs. And uh, I've done a lot of collision work. Uh, so I have painted a lot of fenders and doors and hoods and that crap too. Uh, I've painted five horse trailers and I painted one full-size semi with base clear. Does that make me a professional painter? Not by a long shot. Professional painter in my opinion is a guy that that's all he does for a living is paint. That's all he's ever done is paint. Uh, I have had many jobs and uh, I've done a lot of stuff that I have never done. Uh, most of the cars I have built for myself, I have painted. Uh, I actually painted three cars of my own in one year. And the funniest thing about it is they were all black and it was all the same type of paint. It was DuPont single stage urethane black, all three of them. I built my wife a 71 SS Chevelle big block clone out of a 350 Malibu car. I repainted a Grand National Buick, an 87 Grand National, because they have to be black. And one of them was an 87 SS Monte Carlo, and it was black. Uh, but those were full paint jobs. I painted everything. Uh, even on the Grand National, I painted everything all over. Uh, it was basically a restoration on that car. Three cars in one year. I couldn't do that anymore. No way. But uh, anyway, so at this point, I have decided I'm going to go single stage urethane DuPont black on this car. Uh, the only reason I did clear on this car is because I wanted the paint job to hold out and last longer, and that's clear coat will do just that. Uh, clear coat, that's why all the cars nowadays are basically clear coat. And, uh, you know, that stuff is better. Uh, it holds out better in the sun. Uh, now, there is one thing I can say about it over a single stage. You know, single stage, when you sand it and buff it, it loses its luster and, you know, gets kind of chalky over time. If it's out in the sun a lot, uh, you have to kind of keep up on it with your waxes. And uh, the clear jobs, when you buff those, they seem to hold out a lot longer. So, anyway, I, I've, I've pretty much, I've just decided to do the car single stage uh, black urethane because I don't care if I got to keep wax on it. I'm going to be polishing on it all the time anyway. So, that's what I've decided to do. Uh, I'm so gun shy on this clear coat crap now. Uh, even if I use my old clear, I've got a brand of clear that I've used for 20 plus years and I've never had this issue. Uh, this was the first time using this clear on this much of a panel, but I also did it different than what I used it the first time. I used, actually the clear I bought for this car, this Euro uh, clear high solid stud. I actually opened the can, I bought it for this 55, but I used it, some of it on my hood and trunk on my Cutlass Salon I did. And it's because I ran out of my other clear. And uh, it turned out fine, but I used my clear coat gun for it. And I think I only put two coats on. Uh, this car, this is where I screwed up in a lot of places. Uh, I used my uh, Z-Chrome spray gun, which has a 2.3 needle in it. Uh, so I was pretty much fire hosing it on there, water hosing it on there. Uh, I also used a medium activator uh, in mid to high 90 temps outside, and uh, that 
apparently is a big no-no with this brand of clear. Had it been my old clear, because that's what I always do, I wouldn't have had this issue. Uh, I like a medium activator in the summer because it allows it to kind of kick a little bit quicker than slow or extra slow activator. Clear coat for me has always been kind of hard to spray because you'll spray it, it'll look awesome, you'll set the paint gun down, you'll wait for your flash time, you'll come back out, and that shit will be in the floor. So uh, I have always used a medium activator in the summertime to get it to kick. Uh, anyway, so that's what I did. I put it on too heavy, too much. Now originally I thought, uh, when I'd done the last video, I think I thought I'd done four coats. I actually think I'd done five coats on the car. And uh, so, you know, medium activator uh, with the wrong temperature activator, basically. Uh, too big a gun. And this is the other thing that kind of hit home for me, one of the reps told me. You only have to mess up on your uh, flash time one time. Uh, like go in there and put it on too soon. Uh, a lot of while your first coat's you know, still you know, pretty wet. You only have to mess up one time putting it on too soon and you've already introduced the possibility of getting some pop. So I can tell you right now, I'm so, so gun shy on clear coat right now. Uh, even with the cars that I've painted in the past and not had trouble with, uh, even if I use my old clear. Uh, so for now, I'm going to use single stage urethane black on it and, and be done with it. I'm going to paint the whole car black and I'm going to drive it for a while like that. I'm going to put it together, get it running, drive it in black. And then maybe in about a year, uh, maybe spring or early summer, you know, I'll take it back apart and uh, not, I don't have to take the whole thing apart, you know, just like the back window out of it. And, you know, the trim off of it, the deck lid back off, the tail lights, bumper, all that stuff. And then I'll do my two-tone on it, which is the black base with the green pearl. And it'll have to be clear coated. Uh, but I will use the old clear I've always used. But anyway, uh, there's lots of other things that can cause solvent pop. But, uh, I mean, after you get it that bad like I did, uh, it's, it's a lot of freaking work to get it off there. If I didn't, if I wouldn't have spent so much time in the bodywork stage on the car, I'd already stripped it to bare metal and started from scratch. But that would have, that would have set me behind probably a couple of months right there, and lots more money in material, uh, having to do body filler again and Z chrome again and 2K again. So I'm just not going to mess with it. I'm going to sand it down. I'm going to have to spend a lot of hours sanding it down. And I'm not using a DA. A DA would be the fastest way to do it. Uh, but once I have a body straight, I'm not taking a DA to it with harsh paper because it'll just ripple the shit out of it. Uh, so I'm just going to pretty much keep it uh, with blocks and all that stuff and uh, spend the time and, and get it down that way. That's why it's taking so long. I don't care if it takes me a month out here in 90 degree heat uh, to sand it down to get it all down. That's, that's what I'll do because I don't want a ton of paint on a car. So... One of the reps asked me why I put so much on. He goes, why the hell would you put that much clear on? The high solid's clear. And, uh, urethane paint shrinks, man. It shrinks like hell. So when you color sand above a car, you remove clear. You remove material. And then it always ends up, whether it's a month, two months, three months down the road, it always tightens up. It shrinks again. So you have to color sand above again, which in turn removes more material. So. I didn't want to be out here in three or four or five years down the road out here waxing the car and go through an area because the clear is too thin on it. So that's why I put so much clear on the car. Uh, let me, you know, being comfortable and not ever having a problem with clear, that's why I did that. But I didn't pay attention to that can where it says two to three coats and also didn't watch the video where they do two coats. Uh, I put on what I'm, I'm pretty sure it was five. So. I've got areas of the car that I had some runs in, and I sanded the runs out in here, and they looked fine. You get them in the sun, get to looking at them, you can see the outline of the run in solvent pop. It's like white spotted run outline. So that right there again shows you it's it's too thick. So anyway, I'm not I'm not ever going to use that uh, brand of clear again. And it's not the clear's fault. If I had have followed their directions, it'd have been fine. But me being the expert that I think I am in my head. Uh, I did it my own way and it bit me in the butt. It cost me a lot of time and money. So I'm not a rich guy, so that really sucks. Uh, anyway, so that's pretty much what's going on. Uh, just saying and saying and saying and saying basically is what I'm doing right now. But anyway, I still plan on having it ready for that car show uh, in September 25th. And 
if I don't make it to that show, it's probably going to be pretty close, I'm hoping. Uh, so I do have an extra comfort weekend of it because the other show I want to make is Vanita's Oktoberfest, which is October 3rd. Uh, that's the one I really want to go to. So I just want the car done this year. And, uh, so, and I don't have another project car here because I've always been the guy that had multiple projects. And you know, when you, when you have a couple of project cars, when you get really pissed off at one, you, well for me, I always drug the other project in and worked on it for a while. It's just a good way to take a break and still be able to get work done on a car. Uh, I'm not going to get mad and then go in there and sit on the couch and watch TV. I'm going to work on something. Uh, but in this case, I don't have another project car, and uh, I don't even have the money to buy another project car. Although I do know where a couple are that I really, really want. <laughs> I don't need them, in other words. Uh, so anyway, guys, that's the update on the 55. Uh, I've got uh, lots of sanding headed my way, and then I'm going to 2K the car, uh, prime it, and then I get to go back and sand all the primer, and then I get to go and paint the car, and then I get to go and sand it again so I can buff it. So there's you know a couple more weeks of work to go, but if I can ever get paint on the damn car, man, it, it'll be go time for assembly, because uh, that is one thing I can do to a Tri-5 Chevy, and that's get parts bolted on pretty quickly. I know the cars pretty well. I know some guys know them better. I know enough to get me in trouble, I guess. Uh, but it also helps that uh, the last couple of cars I've worked on for customers has been a 55 hardtop and a 57 hardtop. And those are both back from paint projects where you have to put them all together. And that's exactly... Uh, so, you know, doing the windows and rebuilding the window fuzzy stuff, it, that's all still fresh in my mind. Rebuilding the vent, vent window assemblies and all that. So, I can't wait to get assembly. That's, that's my favorite thing. So, oh, and the other thing that I'm going to do this time, which I should have done to begin with, is I'm going to wait until the car is completely sanded and buffed on the body cart before I transfer it to the chassis because I had, I got into a hurry after I painted the car or the body shield. I couldn't wait to get it on the chassis to see what it looked like. And uh, that screwed me up because uh, I ended up sanding and buffing the car after that, and I got sanding residue and compound residue and shit all over that freshly painted and detailed chassis. So. This time I'm going to wait until it's completely done, washed, cleaned, and ready to go, and then I'm going to bolt it on. Because I already know what it looks like on the chassis now. So, Anyway, lots of work coming, so there's your update on the 55.